Good morning. Today is our third Sunday in our Advent journey, and we have today our candle of joy. Allow me to start in prayer before we light our candle. In a world where joy is a distant memory, we call upon you, great God of joy, to come. In the season of Advent, we wait for the coming of joy into our world. We await the birth of the Anointed One, the promised child, who comes into our lives in a new way. Come, Messiah, come and save us. Dear God, we pray for the joy that is found in Jesus, that those who seek it may truly find it. May we celebrate in the joy we find in you, the only joy. Guide and lead us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we have two readings that I'm going to share. And the first reading is from the um, John 1, chapter 1, from verse 6 to 8. And then um, there is another reading from verse 19. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. And then from verse 19. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely. I am not the Christ. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert, make straight the way for the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioning him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stand one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 24. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God prophesy with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. We read up to here and we praise God for the word that is before us. Let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds to hear and receive your message today. 
and to receive new joy in you. Amen. This is my prayer for each one of us today. I pray that the words of Scripture will be captured in our hearts and give us reason for real and true joy, not just during our Advent journey and our Christmas celebrations, but a joy that will stay with us every day of our life. With a theme, our Advent joy, in mind, a lot of thoughts came to mind which I associate with joy. I was thinking about the time that we as family gathered together around tables to play board games or card games. Some of those games you might know, Rummy Cup or Face Ten or Trivial Pursuit or 30 Seconds and you will recognize the last two, if you know them, as games where questions were asked and you had to be quick to give an answer. And although I were not good at any of these, it really brought great fun and joy to my heart. Games that were played with a level of competition, lots of laughs and sometimes disagreement, but we shared in the joy and the fun of togetherness. Those moments where the joy of belonging and acceptance was shared among us. Those moments speaking of love and companionship. That is joy. A family together in love and respect. If that is joy, why then do we have at times somber congregations meeting as the body of Christ, the family of God here on earth? So often hushed and restricted by rules and often judgment. This should not be. It should also be a meeting of love and acceptance and a meeting where joy is shared. Joy because we know the light and should always be filled with joy and celebration. Should that not be? We see in scripture John was a man sent by God. Clearly a man with a divine message, on a mission and with a purpose. Purpose that moved him to do things so out of the norm that attention was drawn and people traveled to see him and to hear his message. Even to the extent that the Jewish leaders sent people to ask him questions. No, this was not a game. But as if it was a game, they ignored that which he shared with them. He ignored him and didn't take him seriously. Although he had a life-changing message, they ignored it. The intention was, as we see in verse 7, that his testimony would be so powerful that men might believe. Those who went to listen had an opportunity to change and an opportunity to believe and experience Real joy. Joy that only the Lord can give. What was John's message? What did he have to share? John spoke about God. He said in John 1 verse 4 to 5, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shine in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He had to speak about God who is the light. The light then, but also light now. Because God does not change and is and will always be the light for, of the world. A light to change the darkness 
of this world. Do you realize something? Unknowingly, the world is sharing some of that message without intention and without realizing it. From a place of ignorance and darkness, with a switch of a button, the dark world is sharing that which is the answer to all darkness. In all the millions and trillions of little lights that is to be seen all over the world during the festive season, a message is shared. A message of light that is getting rid of the darkness. The world does this without even realizing that there is a true message of light that is and will always get rid of the darkness and the corruption within this big world where darkness and corruption unfortunately is still visible. That darkness that is unfortunately removing joy from people's hearts. Is it not ironic how people come to where one of the most important answers is, but they miss it? I'm talking about the people that were sent to John, or the Pharisees that actually went and to Jesus when he was baptizing people. Think about Matthew's account. Pharisees and Sadducees came to be baptized by Jesus. We're not sure where that really happened. But in John's account, priests and Levites were sent by religious leaders to question John instead of being baptized by him. They all missed the most wonderful opportunity and the most important message. We draw on our past experiences to help guide our steps into the future. As people of faith, we look to the stories of our ancestors and our God has, was faithful to remind us to keep faith in these trying times. In Advent, as we watch and actively wait for signs of God at work in the world and in our lives, we remember the stories of old, of God bringing the people out of exile, returning to their home and restoring who they were among the nations. Advent is a time of restoration, restoring our faith even while we wait, renewing our hope, proclaiming that God is still at work around us while revealing what is to come. This is what we receive in Paul's message where he's urging the church in Thessalonica to be patient in their waiting. As we've read in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 24, he encouraged the church to rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Instead of a passive waiting, Paul urges an active waiting for Christ's return with prayer and steadfastness. They are to remember the teachings of the prophets, to hold fast to what is good, and to resist evil, for God remains faithful. This is the kind of advice that comes with a guarantee for results. What would one of those results be? Joy. Joy that is not dependent on where we are, not dependent on on whom we are, with whom we are, or dependent on anything this world can cover under the twinkling of electrical or candlelight, but a joy that comes from Him who is the light. As we read in John 8 verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Is that not joy? True joy? As only he can give us? Amen.
Father God, thank you that you remain the light of this world and that your light will always outshine any of the lights that this world can try to switch on. But your light will always remove the shadows of doubt or fear within our hearts. And even in the most difficult situations, our joy in you will be intact. We praise and we glorify you for that. Amen.